Now, I believe um, we as human beings have a difficulty sometimes with our perception, how we look at things, how we perceive things. Sometimes we blow things up that shouldn't really matter. And sometimes we discount things that shouldn't matter a lot. We just have a difficulty in that time when it comes to judgment. I read a story about Thomas Wheeler. He, uh, he was at one time the CEO of Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance Company, also known as Mass Mutual. And he tells on himself, he says he and his wife were going on a short trip. They were driving along the... Uh, the road just seeing sights and he noticed he was about out of gas and he's pulled over to stop and it happened to be at one of those places where it was full service gasoline. So he got out of the car and went out to stretch his legs and walk around a bit, enjoy the beauty. His wife stayed at the car, but when he came back around the building, he noticed that she and the guy pumping the gas were in a very adamant conversation. It looked like that they were well acquainted and knew each other and it confused him. And So at the parting, they get in the car and she tells him bye and he says, it's good to see you. And they drive down the road and you know what he's going to ask. He says, uh, well, who is that guy? She said, oh, uh, that's a friend of mine from high school, we graduated together and we used to date. He said, oh, well, you know, aren't you glad that I came along and you met me because if you'd have married him, you would have been the wife of a gas station attendant. And you married me and I became CEO of an insurance company. And she said, dear, dear. If I had married him, he would become the CEO of the insurance company and you would be a gas station attendant. So we're thinking about a proper perspective on an issue that we all face. And Jesus understanding that we as human beings usually don't get it. We overlook something that's important or we underestimate something that is important, then the Lord comes along and he, it, it's almost in verse, I know he's not, but it's, it, it's almost if he's, he's talking to himself in verse 30, 30 and he says, what, what can I compare the kingdom of God to so that you'll get it, so that you'll understand what I'm talking about? And he brings up the mustard seed. And he says, well, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed and you sow it in the earth. At another time, and not in this passage, another time he says, if you just have the faith, now listen, listen, if you have the faith the size of the seed of a mustard, the mustard seed, then you say to this mountain, move over here and it'll move. Say to that tree, be gone and it'll move. Now we read that and go, okay, okay. <laughs> And we read on because it's just beyond our perspective to ever get a grasp on that and understand, well, what did he mean by that? Well, he meant just what he said. It doesn't take a great deal of interpretation, but perhaps I can help you today and nothing else get you a perspective. Now, do you have your mustard seed? I want you to just maybe lay it in the palm of your hand or squeeze it between your two fingers and I want you to think about what the Lord said as you look at that. And maybe your first instinct is to say, well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You tell me if I plant that in the earth, I can't, you can't even see it as I hold it between my fingers. I can feel it. It's like a little pebble. If I plant that in the ground, it's going to become like a big bush. Well, that's what Jesus says. I mean, the Lord is a horticulturalist, right? He planted all the, the trees and the gardens at the very beginning. So if he tells you that's the case, and not only do you have to take the word of Jesus, I mean, it's true. You can go plant that seed. Take it on, plant it. If that's what you want to do with it, plant it. And 
Just see for yourself what happens if that doesn't come true. But as Jesus Christ is making the analogy, he's telling us that this seed that you're holding in your hand is large, will grow large enough for birds to put their nests in. So what's Jesus saying? He's saying God is at work. And even though human eyes can't perceive that, human eyes can't digest that, maybe your human mind would even doubt that. He's saying God is at work even though you don't understand what's happening and you fail to get a grasp of it. Little things can happen in our lives that we look back at and see what that little thing made in such a difference in our life. Necessarily, it doesn't have to be good things. A tiny little virus the size of maybe less than a pinhead can infect you and make you so sick you don't feel like getting out of bed. Just a little thing. It can be um, the heart valve that's so tiny it's not even as big as your thumbprint and it starts giving you a little trouble, it can mess up your whole life. Just a little thing. Little things make a great difference of our lives. All of us, I suppose, can point back to some little word that was said that caused some damage in our relationships with others. Little things are very powerful. And sometimes on the positive side, sometimes all it takes is a little patience with someone in order to make a difference in their life. Sometimes it just takes a little love to redeem a situation. Sometimes it takes a little bit of grace to get through some difficulties. Sometimes it takes a just a little bit of understanding to get through a troubled time in your marriage. I'm fascinated with the life of Abraham Lincoln. I always have. I've read several biographies of his life and we know that he went, it's a famous story, he went from a log cabin. His beginnings were, were so poor, he read by firelight, and he became the 16th president of the United States. He saw us through the great war between the states and all the things that he accomplished in a very short period of time. But there was a political cartoon that came out about the era of his, the height of his popularity in the North and his disdain in the South. And this political cartoon showed two farmers passing on the road. And one said to the other, Howdy, mister. Anything going on in these parts? And the other farmer says, Well, ain't nothing going on much in these parts except Thomas Lincoln had a little boy the other day. You get it? Nothing happened except Thomas Lincoln had a little boy the other day. Let me even give you a better one. The Lord Jesus Christ, at one time, and we can't measure it in time or history, but at one point, Jesus Christ moved from heaven to earth. And the purpose of his coming was to seek and to save that which was lost. And when he came to this earth, it wasn't that God decided to visit this earth with a legion of angels. He could have and frightened all of us. He didn't come and meet with the principalities and kings and powers of this earth to have a committee and some sort of discussion as to how best to carry out this plan. No, the Lord turned to a little peasant girl who too had nothing. So poor were he, she and Joseph, they couldn't offer a lamb or a goat. They had to offer what God provided for the poorest of the poor, two turtle doves as their offering of sacrifice. And to that little girl Mary, the Lord planted a microscopic seed. It's not even the big as a mustard seed. And planted that seed in that girl and it seems such a tiny thing. And no one in the world noticed. And very few knew, except Mary and Joseph. And they kept that secret, right? Except to Elizabeth, they kept that secret. But when he was born, he, became, he becomes King of kings and Lord of lords. He's God manifest in the flesh. 
So my point is you can't discount something just because it's tiny and small. You, you don't have to be impressed with going and watching and seeing, well, there's the Bat Building in Nashville. What a magnificent structure. There's the Freedom Tower in New York City or some other place in the world that you might go. Man, man what a man-made thing. The Hoover Dam. You ever seen it? It's quite something to behold. The Brooklyn Bridge. And the Lord says, hey, how, how about just looking at this? You know, you can do a lot of great things with this little thing. So let me give you a couple of lessons, which I think will help you. Number one, you have to understand that Jesus Christ likened this to the kingdom of God, and he said, if you, okay, I'm talking to you, if you have the faith, the size of a grain of mustard seed. Look at it. If you have faith that size, that's your faith. Now, I hope you haven't lost your mustard seed and lost your faith. It's easy to lose. That's your faith. And it's so tiny. He says, if you have that faith, you can say to that mountain, go. And what will happen? It'll be moved. So faith is an active force. And where there's faith, there's hope. And where there's faith, there's joy. And where there's faith, there's peace. When there's faith, there's a positive force. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We're all afraid of losing things. We all have deals with fear. But Jesus told his followers to fight that good fight of fear. And if we focus on the goodness of God, we focus on the certainty of God's promise, we look at the promises of His kingdom all around us, that God's Spirit is with us and He's present, then the kingdom of God is made real. And then when the Lord comes along and makes this what we might think is some ridiculous analogy about a little seed we can barely see in our hand and say, you know, that can grow the size where birds can make nests of it. And that's your faith. And if your faith will just be that size, that's all it has to be. That size, you can do great things. Tony Dungy was a Super Bowl coach. And he wrote a book, wrote a book and in that book, he says, faith plays a big role in successful teamwork. He says what coaches do is they assign players to particular assignments, whether it's a particular play or a particular game plan. And so the guard has something to do and the center has something to do and the wide receiver has something to do. Everyone on the team, all 11 men, have a particular assignment. And many times, no one else, the guard doesn't care what the wide receiver on the other side is going to do. He doesn't care. Why? All he has to do is carry out his duty. And if he carries out his duty properly and all 11 carry out their duty properly, then the play will be successful. And then he writes this, we also have to trust that God is an assignment for each and every one of us. And whether it looks like we're in the middle of the action or whether it looks like the play is going around us in a different pattern, it doesn't make any difference. If we carry out our assignment faithfully, the results will come. We need to break from the natural instinct and play our position and know that the plan will work if we'll just do our part. We have to quit worrying about what everybody else is doing and do what we're supposed to be doing. Isn't that good preaching? I admire Tony Dungy. So God is expecting us, looking for us, to carry out a positive, effective attitude toward the game plan. And it's God's game plan. God puts you where he puts you. He puts you in the position you're in. He allowed these circumstances to come your way, whether it was his perfect will, will or not his perfect will. That matters not. The game plan is this, is this. Overall, the game plan is to put God's will on earth. That's what we pray. Everybody knows the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth 
as it is in heaven. And that's God's purpose, to bring heaven to earth. So what's our part in it? Well, whatever you're doing right now. You say, it seems like I'm up to nothing. Well, you don't know everything. Well, you can say amen to that. It's not embarrassing. Does anybody in here know everything? <laughs> no. So it's okay. You don't understand. Well, you say, what about he's doing? Well, Peter asked that question to John one time. He says, what about him? And what did Jesus say to Peter? You just worry about what you've got to worry about. You just carry out your part. He'll take care of his part. And so I'm trying to carry out my part. You carry out your part. You may think, well, you're insignificant. Did you say insignificant? That's a lesson of here. God created you in his image. And that mustard seed of faith that God allows you to have, and even if it's just a tiny little thing, it can make a difference in your school, in your office, in your field, in your factory, as you go out with an attitude that will help you accomplish things, believing and building, daring and doing. That's one lesson from the mustard seed. Now, the second thing, and I'll be done. God loves working in ordinary circumstances through ordinary people. It's all through the Bible. It's all through history. I've already given you one, Abraham Lincoln. He was a nothing that rose to be one of the great presidents of our country. God just takes delight in that. And God's love um, is greater than any kingdom. God's love is greater than any political system. God's love is greater than anything else, everything around us. God's plan will succeed. It will come to pass, whether you get on board or not, whether I get on board or not, it's going to come to pass. There's a place in Zechariah where it says, the Lord is determined to do this. Well, if he's determined to do it, it's going to be done. So the mustard seed comes along. And I want to leave you with this thought, if you'll allow me. See, this mustard seed, will you look at it one more time? Then I'll leave you alone. That is your faith. And it doesn't matter the size of your faith. That's all it takes. It doesn't, listen, it doesn't matter the size of your faith. Too often we're focused on, I need more faith. I need more faith. I need bigger faith. Increase my faith. All you need is that. And you can move them out. So it isn't the size of your faith, it's the object of your faith. Where's your faith? Sometimes your faith can be in your faith. Why is this not happening? Oh, I don't have enough faith. All you need is that. It's not about the faith, it's about who the faith is in. And God says if you'll just take a little bit of faith, and you'll put it in Him. That's the great object. See, it isn't about us. It's about Him. It's about us as little things. And He knows what we are. We're dirt. I don't say that to offend you. He, you remember my frame. You know that I'm dust. You know what I'm made of. So it isn't about you. You're not everlasting. He's everlasting. It's not about you. You can't do everything. He can do everything. Some of us can't do anything, but He can do everything. God is the great God. It's Him that matters. It's the object of your faith that matters. And sometimes, as I said, we, we think we just need more faith, greater faith. We're all searching for more faith. Let me give you this illustration. A mother is teaching her little one to swim. He's four or five years old, and he's learning how to swim. And he's in that pool, and... She's teaching him, trying to teach him just one lesson. That water has buoyancy to it. It will hold you up. You got air in your lungs? It'll hold you up. And what the little boy has to do is trust. Once you learn, you can trust the water that you're not going to sink. 
then you can swim. Just keep airing your lungs. You have two inflatable, uh, what do they call them? Uh, what do they call these things? Floaties. Yeah, floaties. You have two of those inside. And you just keep them. And so here's this little boy, and he's laying on the water, and he's fighting, and he's wrestling, and he keeps turning over his head and dunking his head. And his mama says, just relax. This water will hold you up. And here, I'll help you. I'll put my hands under your body so that you'll know I've got you if you begin to sink. And once the little boy goes, you got me, Mama? I got you. Then he lays on that, and the mother just barely has to touch him. Because what's holding him up? The water is. He learns to swim. And it's like every time he's fighting that his mother is saying to him, Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, there's the illustration. Because it's just like with you. That little boy can lay on that water just like it's his bed in his bedroom and he can just relax. And if he'll do that, he can become an Olympic swimmer. And what about you? Oh, you're fighting through life and you're, oh, I just don't know. I've got so much anxiety and I'm, I don't know how I'm not going to handle this. He's got you, right? He's going to hold you up. He's not going to let you sink. He's not going to let you drown because it's about Him. And it's His Word and His promises and you putting your faith in Him. It doesn't take much. But once you put it in Him, there are no limits to what can be done. Now, faith has a lot of aspects, asserting truth, assenting to things. I believe that God is almighty. I believe in the Trinity. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I, I believe I'm going to heaven. Those are all assenting to facts that we know are true. That's faith. But faith is more than that. Faith is trusting God, knowing that God is truly always faithful to you. You can put your faith in Him even if it's just the size of a mustard seed. And God who is unmeasurable in stature and who is indescribable in nature can take that one little seed of faith that you put in Him, the living God, and he'll allow you to lie down like a little boy in the swimming pool learning how to swim. And pretty soon you'll be doing Olympic kind of things as a Christian. You'll be praying and seeing prayers answered. You'll be trusting and seeing God move in your life. And the mountains that are there that are hindering you, the mountains that are there that seem so steep, just the, just the little seat can move that mountain. What mountains are you facing? See, it's not about the mountain. It's about the mustard seed. But it's really not about the mustard seed. The mustard seed versus the mountain, this thing has no chance against the mountain. Okay, I'm going to throw my mustard seed at the mountain. Come on. Where's the mustard seed come in? That is my trust in God that he's going to take care of that mountain and God moves mountains. That's what he does. Without Him, we can do nothing. Without Him, we are nothing. So we might look at our life and think, I've, I've got security in my relationships. I've got security in my money. I've got security in my friendships. I've got security in my job. But without God, you don't have any security. There's no such thing as security without God. All it takes according to the author of life, the author and finisher of our faith, is to have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Remember that? Remember that first thing I talked about, Mr. Wheeler? And she says to him, oh, honey, if I'd have married him, he'd be the CEO. And that's what God says to you. God says, with me, there's no limits. I've got a game plan. I want you to fit into it. Are you willing Lord, here's my mustard seed. It's all I got. It's all I've got. Surely, with your mustard seed, you can read Psalm 23 and have a little faith, right? 
that he's going to see you through the valley of the shadow of death. With your mustard seed, surely you can get to Romans chapter 8 and believe, just with a mustard seed, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Surely with your mustard seed you can believe that. Surely with your mustard seed you can say, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. See, it just takes a mustard seed. Now, I want you to take your mustard seed home. You might want to order some more. I got like 500 of these for $7. So I could give you one today. They're really cheap. But even if you just keep this little one, it's, it's illustrative. Take that mustard seed. Maybe put it in a jar. Put it somewhere where it won't fall off and you won't lose it. But put it somewhere where it will remind you. Your daily reminder. That's all. That's all God asked me to do is believe that much. Trust that much. Anybody can do that, right? It's perspective. It's just a tiny lesson 